Hey, what's up guys? I've been looking forward to making this video. Here's the Samsung Galaxy Note 9, Samsung's latest smartphone. And in this video, I'm gonna go ahead and pit it against Apple's almost one year old iPhone 10 in an ultimate speed comparison showdown. So the example I have is the North American one, the Snapdragon 845 chip versus Apple's A11, the legendary A-series processor. So what's new for the Galaxy Note 9? On the surface, not much has changed. The bezels have actually gotten a little bit thicker. The display is brighter and called by DisplayMate the actual best display in the world right now. In the back, you've got a colored glass. There is a much larger battery on the inside, revamped stylus, but most of the changes you're gonna find are on the inside and that's exactly what this test is for now this bad boy joins the ranks of a thousand dollar phone starting at nine hundred and ninety nine dollars so that's quite a tough sell but let's go ahead and see if it's worth it if the performance makes up for it you know there's a lot going for this note 9 i do like the design it's a huge display i mean what the iphone definitely needs and if you really think about it the true competitor of the galaxy note 9 isn't even here yet the iphone 10 plus so we'll have to test that out as soon as it's out but for now, the iPhone 10 is going to be the next best thing. All right, let's take a look at those specs. So interestingly enough, the Galaxy Note 9 has gained a 0.1 gigahertz clock speed increase from the Galaxy S9 series. It also depends on where you're from. You're going to get a different amount of RAM. And these here are the scores to beat. The OnePlus 6 is reigning champion in both the round one and round two tests. And the Galaxy S9 Plus on the Exynos series, not far behind. The Snapdragon 845 didn't even do too well, so I'm a little worried for this one but anyways let's go ahead and begin as usual we will begin with the real world test this test basically represents what you're going to be doing in your day-to-day -day life you know we're going to start with social media jumping into snapchat instagram checking those accounts then moving on on the iphone to edit a photo this is a 12 megabyte 8k image so the export time was surprisingly fast the note 9 just uh, doing that right now then moving on to some gaming in minecraft on the iPhone 10, loads also quite fast, very well optimized for it. And as you can see, this app is not prepared for the Note 9 screen size. So this basically tells me that many of the apps I'm testing haven't been fully optimized for this new device. And I just want you guys to be aware of that. The times may change in the future as the apps are optimized. And I'll have to run this, of course, with the new iPhone 10 Plus. That'll be more of a fair fight, I think. Anyways, there's still neck and neck here at the asphalt racing game, moving on to Netflix, and then jumping right back into a very large application, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. And I'd like you guys to know, I am running iOS 12 beta eight on the iPhone, and I know it's not finished software, but I've been getting spectacular results with it, and I wanted to put it to the test here. It definitely will not be slower than iOS 11.4.1, and I think the results will speak for themselves. Anyways, this is where the iPhone starts pulling ahead, and I noticed that with the fluid interface, I was able to leave applications, enter new ones a little bit faster, so I don't have to wait for the app to fully close on the iPhone. I really like that. The interface almost seems a little clunky on the Note 9. I don't want to talk trash, but uh, you know, it's just not the same feeling going from an iPhone and straight to that. And that's because of the input on the iPhone. It measures at 120 hertz and uh, definitely shows. At this point, we are importing and preparing a 4K video clip. It's about a minute and 30 in length, and most of the time, this is where all of the devices start hanging and falling behind and it really really depends on the processor's optimization of 4k video and the iPhones have always excelled at this the a series is definitely great for encoding uh, for video editing not that you do much of that on your phone but anyways very intensive thing to do and the iPhone is already saving the video while the note 9 is still preparing it anyways gonna fast forward this part nothing really to see so the iPhone of course finishes first and that's a round one time of two minutes and 26 seconds. And this is where it gets interesting. iOS 12 certainly was different in how it handled the background applications. I, I noticed that a lot of these smaller apps were still open in the background, even Minecraft was, but the more heavy and intensive games and stuff were closed. So iOS, I think, does a much better job now of prioritizing apps in the background, especially when you're doing something very heavy, like editing a video. So it was able to keep a lot of these smaller applications open and everything past Netflix was open. So the memory handling on that three gigabytes of RAM is really, really great. And this is where I was a little confused by the Note 9. With that six gigabytes of RAM, did it really need to close the applications that it did? So there were several applications that it shut down in the background to prioritize that video editing, and uh, that dragged on its round two score. I'm surprised because I haven't seen this behavior before on a Note series, and the Note 9 is the first one that actually closed
closed apps in the background. The round one time wasn't as great as the iPhone X, but it did beat the Snapdragon 845 in the Galaxy S9 Plus, which was three minutes and four seconds. So maybe that extra 0.1 clock speed did help there. Round two, not too shabby, 42 seconds. It still did beat the iPhone X, but the iPhone X's old one was around 54 seconds, so an improvement there as well. And with an old time of 234, iOS 12 definitely did contribute to a faster iPhone X. All right, so let's get into the more detailed comparisons here. We're going to start with the usual, and that's a startup test. So Android 8.1.0 versus iOS 12 beta 8 at the moment. There we go. Three, two, one. And hopefully time that pretty correctly. And this has a delayed Apple logo, not right away like this guy but Samsung Galaxy Note 9. Honestly, didn't notice that much difference. There's a couple subtleties here and there on the body versus the 9. So, oh, wow, there it is. So it looks like the iPhone 10 without that screen was the clear winner. All right, let's go ahead and do some app launching. We wanna make sure everything is cleared out. Apple made it a little bit easier to do that now on iOS 12 beta 8. And uh, there we go, still want to clear all button though. Okay, so let's start with the usual Snapchat, one, two, and looks like the iPhone was slightly faster here. Instagram, one, two. No, Galaxy Note 9. These are connected to the same network, so shouldn't be a difference with that. And camera, one, two. All right, so about the same there, maps. Galaxy Note 9 in its home environment. Photoshop Express, one, two. A little bit of a delay while opening. Okay, well, let's go back into the last project and export the very same 8K image here. So, one, two. The iPhone did handle that. Actually, I'd say a couple times faster. Minecraft. This one has still a very long hang before opening, but is ready to go ahead and play before this guy. So, there's that. Going to Asphalt 8, one, two. Pretty large application. And... Looks like it's ready on the Note 9 faster. Wow, considerably faster. Okay, going into Netflix, web-based, and on the Note 9 faster. Looks like most apps are opening on this guy a little bit faster, and YouTube. So, there it is, again faster on the Note 9. A little amazed here. This one seems to launch all web-based applications faster, and the larger ones as well. And on their native browsers, a couple websites, Samsung.com first, one, two, and of course, the Galaxy Note 9 takes that one first. Don't know why that one's taking so long. Let's try Apple. Okay, and one, two. And of course, the iPhone has to load that one a little bit faster. Here we go, one, two. And loads faster on the iPhone, actually. That one showed up with the content faster. Cool, so it looks pretty even there. All right, and time for the benchmarks. So here on Geekbench 4, and get an accurate representation of these devices. Now I do have the six gigabyte version of the Galaxy Note 8. So theoretically, these could possibly be pushed even further, the scores you're about to see. And here are those scores. Come to think of it, not much higher than the old one, but still a definite improvement. And of course the iPhone 10 has the edge on this guy. They're limited by Qualcomm's advancements with their Snapdragon processors. Now the next generation iPhone, the true competitor to the Galaxy Note 9, I think, um, man, that one is gonna be insane, the Geekbench score. Just hope Apple shortens the animations, makes it even a faster feeling, and that way it'll crush it in the actual speed test in the future. And running that speed test for my Wi-Fi at home definitely checks out why all the web-based applications were able to load faster. Oh wow, okay, I spoke too soon. It's the LTE that's limited, not the Wi-Fi on the iPhone, so even more capable here. 536 megabit download speed. I wonder why the web-based apps load so slow on it compared to the Note 9 then. Oh my goodness, what a monster. 279,000 when considering all aspects of this device. The memory, the GPU, the CPU, the user interface. The iPhone on the other hand, wow, a paltry 131,000. So these results have me a little mystified. You know, it did better than the Note 8, but I expected it to do a lot better considering it has, you know, a monstrous amount of RAM. So yeah, as I said, the real test is gonna be between the iPhone 10 Plus or whatever it will be called, the larger 6.5 inch one and this guy. So let's do those biometrics with the screen off. I'm gonna go ahead and tap both. Oh, what? The iPhones was faster. Wow, okay, let's try that again. One, two. 
Okay, that time it was equal. And a third time, one, two. Yeah, just about equal. So face ID and the iris scanning plus facial unlock is on about the same level. And the totally unfair fight between face ID and a fingerprint sensor. Here we go in three, two, one. Yeah, like three times as fast. Here we go once again, one, two, three. No comparison here. So the fingerprint sensor, very secure and way faster than Apple's version. But anyways, guys, there it is. That is a comparison between the Galaxy Note 9 and Apple's current iPhone 10. This is next generation, but it still cannot catch up to the iPhone 10. iOS 12 certainly helps with the memory issues and whatnot, and uh, the load time seems to be a little bit better. But for what this is, this is an amazing device. I actually really like it. I like what they did with the camera. It's incredibly speedy. It's a productivity monster. You cannot beat having one of these on this guy. So, you know, to each their own. And uh, for what it is, I absolutely love it. So you put up a very great fight, the Galaxy Note 9, guys.